Welcome to Chem 21, Preparation of Salicylic Acid. In the first part of this video, we will go over the experimental setup, and later videos will cover the rest of the experiment. Since this is the first experiment where we use organic glassware, let's look at a typical microscale organic glassware kit. In this kit, you will see several pieces. In the upper right, you have the reaction flask, which include the round bottom flask, the three and five milliliter conical vials, as well as the pear shaped flask. For this experiment, we will be using the round bottom flask for our reaction vessel. In the lower left hand corner, you'll see the water jacketed condenser, which we will also use. You should familiarize yourself with all of the other pieces of equipment in this glassware kit. Here you see all of the equipment and chemicals that we will be using in this experiment. From left to right, we have the hot plate with power cord. We have the flexible Tigon tubing used for carrying water to and from the condenser. We have boiling stones, a couple utility clamps, a couple of aluminum blocks, a couple of syringe pipettes. Pipettes aren't shown our condenser with cap and o-ring, as well as our reagent chemicals. We also see our round bottom flask sitting on the aluminum block. Throughout these videos, we will be pausing to ask questions. If you pause the video, you can answer the question for yourself. And if you don't know the answer, you should look it up in your lecture notes or resource materials. The first step in the procedure is to weigh out the sodium hydroxide pellets and add it to 3.5 milliliters of water in the round bottom flask. While using proper PPE, we weigh out a few pellets onto the balance. We can then take the mass of those pellets. If the mass fluctuates slightly, we take the center value that is seen on the balance. After recording this mass and adding the pellets to the water in the flask, we then are ready to measure out the methyl salicylate, which is a thick oily liquid. The methyl salicylate is measured first by volume using a syringe pipette to get about 0.2 ml of the liquid into the pipette. Once we have about 0.2 ml measured out on the syringe, we add that to our flask. The flask has been pre-teared, and so we can find out exactly how many grams we added to our flask. Record the balance mass into your lab notebook. The next step is adding our boiling stone, one or two of them, to the mixture. Boiling stones are carefully added at this stage because it's much harder to add them later on. Next it's time to attach the condenser to the flask. We, at this stage, are going to attach two pieces of ground glass together and make sure that they form a nice seal. We do this by putting grease on the joint using an appropriate applicator stick. And then with the O-ring in place, we will be able to attach the two pieces of glassware together. The o-ring goes on first, and then the cap is behind it, and the threaded cap can then be tightened by screwing it shut. Now we bring the 
apparatus over to the hood and begin to assemble all of the apparatus together. The first and most important thing to do when assembling your equipment is to make sure that it is stabilized and doesn't fall over. We use utility clamps attached to the bars in the back of the hood and ensure that it, they form a tight fit around our apparatus. We also make sure that the apparatus is exactly vertical so that the clamp is correctly adjusted so that our apparatus is pointing straight up and not off to the side. We also save room for the hoses as you see by the placement of the clamp in a way that allows us to attach the hoses later. Once we know we have the apparatus at the right height, we can place the aluminum block down and re-secure the clamp. Before turning on the heat, you need to attach the water hoses and make sure that they are secure and that the water is flowing. We attach the lower hose and the upper hose so that they fit snugly and are not going to pop off once the water is on. So we check to see if they're tight. They seem to be fairly tight there. And then we attach the lower hose to the water inlet. And we take the upper hose and put it back down the drain. Once all the, the hoses are tight and snug, we can uh, gently turn on the water slowly at first. The water then fills the outer jacket of the water condenser. Often the water has air bubbles in the line at first, and so you have to wait for a while to make sure you get a steady flow. You want a water flow that's fast enough to cool the inside of our apparatus without being so strong that they pop off the apparatus entirely from the water pressure. Once everything is secure, we can turn on the heat. Make sure you turn on the heat and not the stir. Your instructor will tell you how high to turn it up. In this case, we're turning it up to about level four. And now it's time to wait for our reflux to begin. Stay tuned for the next video where we will show the reflux and the isolation of the crude product. Thanks for watching.